What are my plans for next Saturday? Well, let's see. In the morning I will go swimming, and in the evening I'm going to the movies with friends. Beyond that, of course I have plans beyond Saturday too. In a few years I would like to get married, move to a nice house with a garden, in a quiet, peaceful neighborhood. How do I see my life 40 or 50 years from now? I haven't given that much thought. Life is what happens while you are busy making other plans. John Lennon The future of our world. Theories of the future are similar to the plans we make in our lives. The further we look, the more the question marks. In the world of science, the future is forecast on the basis of various mathematical models. Let's look at an example. If the population of the Earth was 6.1 billion in 2000, which then went up to 7.2 billion by 2014, it does not necessarily imply that, by direct proportion, the population of the planet will reach 13 billion by the year 2090. If it were that simple, demographers would leave work before noon. But they do not. Let's see why. It has to be taken into account that people in developed countries are having fewer and fewer children, while people in developing countries are having more and more. If even more children are born, they will have more children too, once they get to the point in their lives where they think about having a family of their own. Thanks to better healthcare, life expectancy worldwide is likely to increase. Calculations also take into account the introduction of birth control and available resources as well since people have to eat, too. Having added almost a hundred factors to the model, we can state that by 2090, the population of the Earth is expected to be only 10.7 billion instead of 13 billion. It is late at night. The tired demographer has been working on mathematical models all day. Now he can go home to get some rest. One of the pitfalls of future research is the intuitive linear point of view, meaning they take all that exists now as a starting point. However, in reality, science is developing exponentially, so inventions and economic methods can appear any time that will shake our view of the world to its very core. Let's open the imaginary papers of the future and take a look at a few events that are probably going to happen. A hundred years from now, by the 22nd century, half of the species living today may be extinct. A thousand years from now, spoken languages change extremely fast in this sped-up world we live in. Today, languages change more in a few years than they did in the past in a lifetime. A thousand years from now, all the words and languages that exist today will die out. 20,000 years from now, Chernobyl will finally be safe again. 25,000 years from now, the radio message from Arecibo will reach its destination, the globular star cluster M13. It was broadcast to provide extraterrestrial civilizations with some information about our existence. A reply may only be expected 50,000 years from now at the earliest, and that is only if the message is ever heard by intelligent beings. 100,000 years from now, the titanium parts of a MacBook will start to corrode. 296,000 years from now, the space probe Voyager 2 will pass by the star Sirius. 500,000 years from now, the heating elements used in the nuclear power plants today will not be dangerous anymore. One million years from now, all the glass manufactured today will decompose. Ten million years from now, with the constant expansion of the Red Sea, a new ocean will form. Two 
240 million years from now, the solar system will have completed an entire galactic orbit. 3.5 billion years from now, the conditions on the Earth will have become more like the conditions on Venus. There will be no trace of life anymore. 5.4 billion years from now, the hydrogen reserves of the Sun will be running low. The celestial body will start to inflate and turn into a red giant. The Sun will swell 250 times its present size. It will devour Mercury, Venus, and probably the Earth as well. Billions of years from now, our bodies will have disintegrated into atoms, and we will wander as particles in space, when that gigantic eternal will that creates a new universe unites us into molecules, cells, and tissues. And who knows what universe that will be in time? Autumn, the seasons, the Earth, the solar system, they will not even be memories by then, as reason will cease to exist and everything we hold dear will disappear without a trace. Will life ever be reborn? All this is beyond our understanding.